Hello, this is your host Dan Stafford with the Midwestern Geek in Cali and this is going to be a demonstration of using Peppermint 10 Linux. So right now we're starting off on a little bit of infinity screen here and as soon as I actually minimize OBS Studio will be able to see the um, Linux desktop. Now I won't be able to see what's going on in OBS so hopefully I'll remember everything I need to do but this is the Peppermint desktop for Linux and I'm going to put on my readers here so I can actually see what I'm showing you and uh, it's as you'll notice it's very very similar to uh, Windows in a lot of ways it may be reminiscent a little bit more of Windows 10 so uh, when I want to get into something that is basically what would be the equivalent of a start button here and I've got access to all kinds of things on the left side I can get into settings for Peppermint Linux um, there's all kinds of options here software manager to install new applications this would be um, to do updates etc terminal is like the command prompt in Windows uh, media player will play movie files this is my file browser it comes with Firefox by default and um, as you'll notice up here I actually installed the chromium web browser this is an open source version of Google Chrome so it does pretty much everything that Google Chrome does but it's an open source one uh, Calibre is a uh, reader software. Mousepad is just kind of similar to Windows Notepad. OBS Studio is the software I'm using to record all this. And recently used gets into things that you use um, fairly frequently. And then um, let's see here. In internet. This is things that you can use for internet. I really um, it also comes bundled with Thunderbird mail all right so if you need an email client on board I, I tend to use Gmail so chromium does that for me uh, no real issues there um, office software it comes with some web links to um, Microsoft Office online I actually installed open office uh, 4.1.7 that was a little bit more work than it would be in Windows um, I had to go through a little bit of hoops to do that but you can um, very easily install LibreOffice which is very similar to OpenOffice on uh, Peppermint Linux um, a lot of times if you're installing something on Peppermint um, I'm gonna open the terminal here so you can see all right I'm in the terminal so what I would want to do is type in sudo and um, this tells it to do this as an administrative user otherwise it's going to prompt me for the same password that I need to put into this I'm telling it go ahead and prompt me through for the password right away basically and then I would do app uh, get app dash get and space install and then type in Libre I think it's Libre dash office and put in my password it does not give you the uh, asterisk symbols for the password it stays blank even though you're typing the password in and unable to locate the package I probably spelt it spelt it wrong um, it may be just uh, Libre space office all right so I'd have to look around for it but that's trying to do it through the terminal okay so let's take a look in the um, software manager which is a lot easier for most people it's a graphic tool oh there we go it opened 
Um, as you can see, there is a boatload of soft, uh, software here. I mean, Audacity that's for um, for um, recording audio. Uh, VLC is a movie player. Rhythm Box is an audio player. There, there's just so much Stellarium. If, if I remember correctly, is like a planetarium software that that was really cool, as I recall. Um, so I would click on Office, and uh, there we go, and there we go, LibreOffice, full um, so, uh, Office suite for free. Okay. Uh, you can install individual pieces of LibreOffice, like LibreOffice Writer. This is very similar to Microsoft Word. LibreOffice Calc um, is very similar to Excel. Um, and then there's all kinds of text editors, um, lots, of, lots of different possible ones. Impre LibreOffice Impress is going to be similar to PowerPoint. Um, so there's tons of um, software available in Linux, and uh, most of these are going to be free. So uh, in, you're not going to have a problem getting work done on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, when I look down here in the corner, I have the clock, where I'm at, sound, um, volume adjustment, my internet. Um, security all right so they want to tell me that a new version of the update manager is available mint to update da, 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 da. and let's see I haven't really run one of these so I think I could um, just click there and it should run it and then I have to type in that password And it's going to chew on it for a minute. Now, this this machine that I'm working on only has four gigs of RAM, and it's um, got a little bit lighter processor. It's not a very heavy duty processor at all, but you can see it runs fairly responsively. Uh, Peppermint is based on Ubuntu Linux, but it's a little trimmed down and lighter weight, so it doesn't. Um, need quite as much system resources. This is definitely easy on the system resources. It runs pretty well with uh, 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 they have um, quite a few updates uh, available here. So I'm not going to run into too many of those right now. 423 recommended updates. Uh, uh, Clam AV is antivirus, and yes, I do run antivirus on my Linux installations, although there are not as, nearly as many viruses written for Linux as there are for um, Windows or Mac. There are, uh, there are some out there, so it's always good to be careful, and there is just... A boatload so I'm actually kind of learning as we go how to install these updates um, I didn't really see one for chromium which is the web browser all right let me give it the password And if it asks about a reboot, I'm not going to do that because obviously that'll stop the recording. Um, but you can see it's not really that scary to use this. If you're used to Windows, you'll be able to get used to this fairly easy. And there's um, plenty of uh, online help packages. A lot of times the help for Ubuntu, which is um, bigger and more well-known that this that uh, Peppermint is based on, uh, the a lot of the uh, help for Ubuntu will work in Peppermint because it's based on Ubuntu. 
so it's there's a lot of documentation and ubuntu is probably one of the most popular desktop linux operating systems uh, around uh, it just uses more system resources and runs, a little, it's a little bit bigger, comes with a little more software and uses a little bit more system resources than Peppermint does. So I went with Peppermint on this and I'm really liking it. Now I, you know, customized the desktop. Um, to, 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 I just right clicked on the desktop and clicked as uh, on customize and you know layout i can change icon size direction direction uh, desktop settings i've got access to desktop icons computer home trash trash might be a good one to turn on okay good i just turned that on network let's go ahead and eh, i don't like that i'm happy with the network being down here um and let's put um computer we'll turn that on that probably will give me access to like the drives and stuff but notice down here this one that looks like a file cabinet i can get at my files right here so i don't really need to go hunting too far to find um to find my files or any of that so I'm okay there. Um, it's almost done downloading all the packages for the updates. We'll let that go. Um, while I'm at this, maybe, uh, well, I'm going to let that run a little bit before I open any Office software. I kind of want the updates to finish before I open anything and try uh, try to uh, show and show you anything in case it kind of crashes whatever I'm working in as I'm doing the in the recording here um, yeah with any luck this this won't take super long but um, yeah it, it's not terribly scary at all I think I can go ahead and get in chromium and I didn't see any update for open office so I can probably show you both of those without much trouble so um, I'll right click Chromium and open it. I think it would work just as well if I double click left. Okay, it does. Here we are in Chromium. Um, I'm gonna switch tabs. I don't really feel like showing off my Gmail or anything like that. Super Aquarian is, uh, you can just go to superaquarian.com. This is one of my blogger blogs. Um, notice I created all kinds of pages about this. Um, so if I take a look here, um, I didn't really do, yeah, here we go. This is stuff about uh, Aquarius. This is actually my birth chart over here. You can click on that and make it bigger. Um, over here, this is about the stellium in Aquarius in 1962. And then um, we'll let that go. And uh, yeah, there's some, uh, some uh, cool information available here. I've got a page for contact. Um, where people can reach out, email, etc. Find me on Facebook or Twitter. These are uh, my personal stuff, not uh, not my show stuff. I have uh, completely separate sites for the show. Um, this is about poetry websites. I've done poetry on the web for quite a long time. Um, matter of fact, I can show you that real quick um yeah there's spellbook i think i put this in one of the more recent episodes as well spellbook is actually my oldest blog online um notice it's opening a, a, stuff a little slow because it's kind of busy chewing on in the background um on all those updates so and it's running obs and recording this video at the same time hopefully it's um, running well and uh, 
now tons of uh, poetry I've got some chat books that I've done over the years available for sale online um, also have like uh, links to poetry sites um, of course my certifications as a technician I, I kind of like to put that wherever I'm at on the web if it's one of my sites um, you know just a lot of fun things this is actually a memorial site to um that i built uh, every now and then there are you know certain people that kind of touch my life in a way and I, i'll build memorials to them this is my uh friend from down under spinny she was a poet online and um you know this is a poetry site the actual background art is her work and um you know she did that work and, and this is all her poetry on this site not all of it i mean there's still i backed up her poetry a while back and and when she passed away with her family's you know knowledge and understanding i've put it up on this memorial site so that her poetry lives on and stays online so i still have more of it that's backed up that i need to post i've been picking away at that as i can and then i have um other blogs of course uh getting 30 that's been in one of my previous episodes and then let's see um my old business site a memorial site for my mom um 66 sax is kind of a cool one i play a little bit of uh saxophone i'll show you this one this is to show you what can be done with blogger blogs i mean i know it's kind of old school but you can do some pretty cool stuff with the blogger blogs um i've done some pretty pretty amazing uh sites with blogger blogs and, and i'm you know i still love it it's not as great on mobile as something like wordpress um google hasn't really developed uh much of a mobile flair for it but i heard rumors that they might be updating that but uh, you know it's just a lot of fun and enjoyable and and like i said i have a lot of blogs but they're all oriented by subject you know being an aquarian i have a ton of interests um, this is actually a picture of my guitar and a little practice amplifier. And this is actually my uh, workbench that I built myself in the background. It's got a stainless steel top for working on computers. Yeah, that top is grounded. Um, I built it. Um, mostly the corner posts are all 4x4s. I have 4x4 and 2x4 braces underneath. There's a double 2x4 brace in the center. I have a vise on one end of this thing. You could put an engine block on this workbench. It's stout. Um, you know, and then this is my uh, Fender Stratocaster. Uh, it's a Mexican-made Stratocaster. Uh, I call her Rosie. She's like a rose red finish and a rosewood fretboard beautiful guitar plays like a dream um and the saxophone is is mine too it's a 1966 selmer bundy tenor saxophone okay so as you can see uh getting around on the web is not that difficult on linux it pretty much works the same as on a windows machine you open a browser and as long as you're connected to the internet you go to whatever site you want so let's take a look um I'll go ahead and open up Open Office, and we'll give that a minute. I may need to right-click and hit Open. We'll give that a shot. I think it's delaying a little bit because of the um, updates running in the background. But here we go, Open Office. This is very, very similar to LibreOffice. They actually are two forks on the uh, two branches on the same tree, more or less. Um, Open Office 4.1.7 is the most recent version. Open a text document in Open Office. Now, the, the interesting thing with Open Office is it's more uh, of a dark mode on Linux and a light mode on Windows. 
which kind of freaked me out a little bit at first, but um, that that is a difference and takes a little bit of getting used to. But it it uh, does pretty much, you know, this would do just anything like Word will almost. Um, All right, and then uh, there we go. There's that. Right, select the text. I can change the um, oh typewriter font. That looks kind of cool. I actually like that. I think I might even uh, make that the default font. I love old school typewriters. I think they're just super cool. Yeah, and then here I can do um, numbering, numbered lists. etc and then over here I can do a bullet list uh, all right and right now it's justified left I can justify center no problem So um, let's see, insert an image, I'm guessing, uh, insert picture from file, all right? So, you know, pretty much anything that I could do with Office, uh, uh, Microsoft Office, for the most part, I can do with OpenOffice. There are some differences, it's not exactly the same. But uh, it definitely will do anything you need to as far as regular um, work or that kind of stuff. Let's uh, play around with mouse pad just a little bit. This, like I said, this is just a little bit like uh, notepad and windows. So... So not really all that hard and that the biggest deal is if there's not software that is already bundled with what uh, with uh, peppermint when you first install it um, you may have to go into the um, software package manager uh, software manager here and go searching for it to install it and like I said, LibreOffice is going to be a lot easier. You can find that in Software Manager. Uh, I had quite a few extra steps to go through to get OpenOffice on here, but I know OpenOffice because I use it on Windows. I generally at home don't use Microsoft Office anymore. Um, ah, I got dropped off the network for a minute there. Um, good thing I'm just recording this video to a local file. So there you have it. That is, um, you know, using Peppermint. And um, let's do one other thing here. Uh, I can get into settings and, you know, do uh, drivers and all kinds of stuff. Display uh, settings. Um, there's ways to customize the desktop. Um, power settings, network connections, there, you know, I mean, yeah, it, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to because this is not Windows, uh, you know, it's Linux. But as you can see, it's not that crazy that you couldn't move from Windows 7 to Linux and survive. Uh, if you've been using Windows for quite a while, and you move over to Peppermint Linux, which I might add is free, as is Ubuntu, you could pretty well work with either one of them. Now, if you install Ubuntu off the, off the get-go, instead of the taskbar and notification area and start and all that being along the bottom like it is here, you're going to see it over to one side. But it's pretty easy to move it 
over to um, over to the bottom. You know, it's not that tough at all. So I'm going to go ahead and on that note, I'm going to wrap up the demo here. If it didn't get killed, uh, I think I actually, actually just accidentally opened a second instance of OBS. Um, so let me uh, kill that off. That was unintentional. Okay, and there we are. We're back in um, OBS in the Infinity screen. And I'm going to be uh, switching in a few minutes over to the other um, to the other PC, to the Windows PC, because I have a lot more stuff already pre-set up in OBS there. It's got a lot more RAM on it, so it'll be better quality video, etc. But um, I, on that note, um, I'll uh, take it over to the actual show in just a few minutes here. But there's a brief demo of Peppermint 10 Linux. As you can see, not too bad at all.